David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you the latest release from Narwhal. It is their annual limited edition model, which is a take on their Nautilus design called the Grand Rhapsody. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Grand Rhapsody, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Narwhal who provided this pen for review. Um, I saw the Narwhal crew at the recent Triangle Pen Show. It was good to get back to a pen show. Um, you know, it really wasn't about the pens. It was more about uh, getting to hang out with uh, all of my pen friends that I hadn't got to see in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm looking forward to the DC show coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I will also be making my way out to the San Francisco show for the first time. Uh, I've heard nothing but great things about the San Francisco show, and I'm looking forward to seeing some folks on the West Coast uh, who don't make it out to some of the East Coast shows. Uh, plus, uh, I'm a California native. It's always nice to visit my home state. Now, uh, I'm originally from Southern California, the uh, San Diego area, and there's a big difference culturally between uh, Northern California, where San Francisco is located, and SoCal. Um, I like them both, but they are different. Okay, enough about California. Let's look at a pen. This is the Narwhal Nautilus Grand Rhapsody. Uh, this limited edition will be 400 pieces, the pen is cigar-shaped and made from SEM Ebonite, which is manufactured in Germany. Uh, the material is actually manufactured from the foundational colors that Ebonite makers use for different colors. There's going to be some variation in each of these pens. Uh, some will have more of blue and red blend, uh, and then others will have more of like a brown-red look. Ebonet like this is interesting in how different portions of the pen will have different cross sections of the material which provide a unique and varied look. Now, recently Narwhal has been in the pen news regarding some issues with Twisby, or rather issues that Twisby was having with Narwhal. Um, I won't go deep into the details. You can check out either Twisby's or Narwhal's Instagram feeds for statements from both companies made in relation to the settlement of the issue. But the bottom line is that I believe that Twisby realized that they were incorrect in some assertions that they had made regarding a perceived patent infringement. Uh, and then they publicly admitted that they were mistaken in their actions accusations. Uh, they had made an announcement uh, that any retailer that carried Narwhal products would not be allowed to also carry Twisby. Uh, and that threat has been revoked as well. And all is good. Uh, in the end, uh, it was all a big deal about nothing, I believe. Uh, you know, I honestly feel it seemed like kind of a misunderstanding that got out of hand. And it's nice to see some common sense has apparently prevailed. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is rounded and topped with a metal insert showing the number of the pen. As I mentioned earlier, this is a limited edition of 400 units. Um, I like how you could really see the different layers of color of this ebonite as it swirls around the top of the cap. Then we have the clip. Uh, it has a half circle design. I've mentioned this several times when reviewing narwhal pens, but I feel it's really a lost opportunity to not have the clips designed to resemble a spiraling narwhal tusk. Uh, I know that that would probably be a pain to manufacture, but I think it would look cool and be a really distinctive element to add to narwhal pens. Maybe one day. Uh, the cap is straight. Uh, and then at the end, there is a chrome plated band. Um, all of the trim on this pen is chrome plated. Uh, the band is stamped rather than engraved, which is nice, and includes the narwhal name as well as a rather neat ocean motif with some waves. It's a nice looking band. There is a medium sized step down to the barrel, which begins with one of the uh, distinguishing features of this pen, which is the three porthole shaped ink windows. I think these are pretty neat. Now, this pen was inked when I took these pictures, so you can't see all the way through the ink chamber. Um, now, you can't just have one porthole because the light would really wouldn't be able to get around in there to show you your ink situation. And having three holes looks a little bit better, in my opinion, than only two holes. I've seen other more high-end pens on the market with ink windows uh, somewhat similar, which have had a rather sloppy trim around the edge. Uh, the chrome plated rings really fit well into these holes. Uh, there's been some attention to detail in the manufacturing of this pen. Uh, however, I wish the holes were a bit more intentionally aligned. Um, I would have liked to seen it with one of the holes either aligned directly with the clip 
or with them falling, you know, kind of halfway in between. Um, it really doesn't do either, so I get the feeling the hold to clip alignment on these pens are just random. Uh, the barrel is straight until you get to a thin chrome band, which signifies the beginning of the piston knob, and then the end of the barrel is rounded. Again, I really like the swirling look that the cross section of the material provides on the end there. The cap twists off in just over two full rotations, and underneath we have a number six stainless steel nib, which Narwhal makes in-house. Uh, I really like the stamping on this nib. I think it's unique, and the logo looks really sharp. Uh, the nib is available in fine, medium, broad, uh, double broad, as well as a 1.1 stub. Uh, this model here I have is a 1.1 stub that I am really enjoying. Um, I really don't do a lot of stubs, but you'll see in the writing sample that the one on this pen is outstanding. It's been a lot of fun. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a flare and angles up slightly before it reaches the threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the section is a decent length. Uh, I don't find my grip spills over to the threads that much, but if yours does, I don't find the uh, ebonite threads to be sharp or uncomfortable at all. Um, I find the Nautilus model to be well balanced in the hand. It does have a little bit of weight to it, which I like. Uh, the ebonite has a bit of warmth to the material as well. Uh, it is long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing because the cap is not designed to post. Um, since I previously mentioned the piston knob, you could safely deduce that this is a piston filler. Uh, this piston mechanism is fairly smooth um, and it fills very nicely. I won't twist it, it's inked right now. Um, the nib unit also easily twists out and the internals open up really nicely and easily for efficient cleaning, which is nice as well. The price for the Narwhal Grand Rhapsody is $180 and is available at a select group of retailers. Um, there is Pen Chalet, Gold Spot, Drom Ghouls, Pen Realm, Stilo and Stile, Stilo Graphica, Nibs.com, and then there was a UK retailer that I'll admit I was not familiar with called Art from the Heart. Uh, and the price from what I could see is the same across all of those retailers. Uh, as I mentioned previously, this is a limited edition of 400 units, uh, and some of the retailers might sell out rather quickly with their allotment. Um, I feel that $180 is a fair asking price for this model. Uh, it's a bit more than the standard Nautilus models, but with this being a fairly unique ebonite and being a limited edition, I can understand the premium. Uh, okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Narwhal Nautilus Grand Rhapsody. I want to give you another look at that material. I just think that the, uh, the way that the cross section comes in here brings some interesting variation into this material. Uh, this is what it looks like with the original Nautilus. Um, I've always really liked the antiquing trim on that particular model. Then here is a Narwhal Schuylkill. And then here is the original Narwhal Demonstrator. And in regard to some non-Narwhal pens, here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, here it is with a Trisby Diamond 580. And finally, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the original Demonstrator, and here it is with the All-Star, and finally here it is with the Twisby Diamond 580. Okay, here we go with the Narwhal. And this is the not, we'll just call it the Grand Rhapsody. But it is a, uh, uh, a Nautilus. And this is a 1.1 stub. And the ink that I'm using today is Private Reserve. Private 
Purple Mojo. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice vibrant purple and pretty saturated. Uh, you know, I something I realized is I always thought that uh, that this ink kind of feathered a little bit on this sample. But what I learned is that it does that when you introduce just a little bit of water. So when I was making these, uh, my dip pen I had, you clean it out in between the, uh, the ink samples I was making. And so there was maybe a little bit of water left on there so that when a little bit of water is introduced, then it has a tendency to feather a little bit. But as you can see towards the end of this, when the water was gone then it's fine and in this writing sample you can see that there's no feathering on this uh, rhodia paper as well um, this is what the ink looks like in regard to cross violet another vibrant saturated purple and then here it is with mont blanc's psychedelic purple this is what the bottle looks like at 60 milliliters really wide neck so you can get just about any nib inside of here and here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I, you know, I am not a huge fan of stubs. It's just not something that I do that often. But this stub is amazingly outstanding. Uh, it is incredibly smooth. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Uh, but very, very smooth. Uh, and decent on the ink flow as well. Uh, even though it didn't spread there, I'd said that the ink flow is decent on here. Uh, in regard to reverse writing... You can see that's not necessarily what this nib is really meant for. But in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. And you can see how it effortlessly adds uh, a great deal of flair to your handwriting. Um, I would highly recommend this 1.1 nib on here. This is one of my favorite nibs I've tested out in quite some time. So here we have the Narwhal Nautilus Grand Rhapsody. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a limited edition of 400 units. So if you're interested in this, it's something you would probably want to take advantage of sooner rather than later with one of the retailers that I mentioned during the review. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.